Every believer has a voice, and it's the voice of victory. My God has made the way for me. Now, Acts 10, 38. Now, here, the apostle Peter is preaching. This is 10 years after the day of Pentecost. He's preaching at Cornelius' house in, uh, in Caesarea. This is the centurion. It's, this is how Jesus is so easy. The centurion's servant. And he, he, he sent for him. He had built the synagogue in Capernaum. That's Jesus' hometown and his home synagogue where Jairus was the leader of the synagogue. And, uh, and he said, now, now he's, he's a high-ranking commander. And uh, in this instant, you could, you could have all military people, you understand what I'm saying, I'm just using this as an example. He is the centurion of that area. He, he could, um, you could loosely compare him to a garrison commander. He is the commander of that area for Rome. So he said, I'm not important enough for you to come into my house. You just say the word. I recognize authority when I see it. And Jesus marveled at his faith and said, I have not found such faith, not, no, not in all of Israel. That included his staff. Yeah, what? Faith in the word alone. You say it, I believe it, he'll be healed. Yes. Jesus said it. That young man was healed. And he was, he was dying. He was about to die. Amen? Yes. He's about to die. He said, say it, so Jesus said it. He said, come to my house, so Jesus started to his house. That's what I want you to see. Amen. So he said, I'll come and heal him. He said, no, 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 wait, you don't have to come in here. I'm not important enough for you to come into my house. That is honor. I mean, that is high honor. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not that important. I'm not, but the point is that how Jesus did what he said do. Jairus said, come lay your hands on my daughter. So he took her by the hand. <laughs> Glory to God. So, now, Jesus, Peter is preaching there, and then he preached this entire sermon. But now, the conclusion is in that 38th verse. How God, who is so good, Say it again. God is so good. He is good. He is a good God. Amen. He is good. And he's good this morning. And he's good to you and he wants you well this morning. <laughs> Glory to God. And all of you out there, you may have never heard anything like this in your life. I don't believe anything they're saying. Well, believe what Peter said. And God is so good. And he created everything good. He never created anything bad. That The devil was good when he created him, and he was fool enough to turn his anointing. He was the anointed cherub, the anointed angel. He turned bad. The scripture said he was perfect in the day that he was created, and iniquity was found in him. He had no tempter. He doomed forever. Amen. But Jesus came and bore our sins in his own body on the tree and died and went to hell and paid the price for our healing, for our redemption. Amen. And he bore the, the stripes at the whipping post on the same, at the same time he bore our sins in that same body. It's not salvation or healing. It's salvation and healing yeah. and deliverance and miracles. Jesus paid the price. Now the price is paid. It's free. Receive it. Amen. 
take it. Glory to God. I learned take it from Gloria, a receiver. Believe that you receive and you shall have a receiver. You have to have a receiver. My grandson is an outstanding college quarterback, but he's not worth a flip without a receiver. He could throw that thing all day long and hit the guy in the face with it. I'm, I've actually seen him do it, and he, he throws so hard, sometimes it's hard to handle. But I've seen him just, just hit somebody in the chest and it just bounce out. Well, it wasn't John, Jonathan's fault. It was the receiver. Well, I'm not faulting the receiver because he throws the thing like a bullet. <laughs> but what I'm saying is those two have to get together. Jonathan has to put it on the mark, and that young man has to take it, receive it. I don't know if anywhere around him, he has to take it. He has to receive it. You have to take healing. You have to receive healing. You have to take salvation. You have to receive it. You can't get born again without receiving Jesus. You can't get born again without believing it in your heart. You can't get born again without saying it with your mouth. That's faith. That's the fundamentals of faith. You believe it in your heart, and you say it with your mouth. And the apostle Paul said, we believe, therefore we have spoken. Now, the psalmist David wrote that. He was quoting him. Therefore we believe and we have spoken. It's shouting time in here. Amen. Are you a receiver? Yes. Well, I'm throwing. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm throwing it out there so somebody receive it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. How? That, 30, 37, that word I say you know which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God, say God, God. how God, God, the good God, our good God, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good. Doing good. He went about doing good. He went about doing good. And what? Healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Now that doesn't mean he, he just healed them all. He healed all of them that would receive it. In his hometown, they wouldn't receive him. He did lay his hands on a few sickly people and healed them. He tried. That proves the, his will to heal. I mean, it's I mean, it, it, your hometown, man. You want to you, you do good in your, in your own hometown. So, well, I don't know if it's his will or not. Well, wake up. Why wouldn't it be? What is so special about you that he won't heal you? It's already been done, darling. It's already been done. He's already done it. He's already borne the sickness. He's already carried the disease. He's already done it. He's already done the will of God. He came to do the will of him who sent me, and he went about healing all that would receive it. And this is 10 years after Jesus went to glory. This is 10 years after the resurrection. Up until this time, it was a Jewish church altogether. And now, thank God for Cornelius. And oh, that got in all the rest of us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Why? Because our loving God is no respecter of person. Glory to God. Matthew. Chapter 8, our good God healed. Matthew chapter 8, and we're going to take time here to read some scriptures before we pray. Now, actually, Matthew 8 is where Jesus fulfilled what Isaiah said. Now, we're going to read what Isaiah said in chapter 53 in a moment. Matthew chapter 8, verse 16. 
When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and healed all that were sick. He healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Matthew 12. Verse 15, 14th verse, When the Pharisees went out and held a council against him, how they might destroy him. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from there, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. Now there's bound to be a jerk in that great multitude. There's bound to be a no good in that great multitude. There's bound to be somebody in there that's done every kind of nasty thing you can think of in a great multitude. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and back in that day, there were a lot of demon-possessed people because the, 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 the religious leaders at the time weren't doing anything about it. They were preaching the law, and Jesus preached the blessing of Abraham, and he started doing something about it. And he healed them. Healed all of them. Praise God. All right. Let's go to Matthew 19, verse 2. And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. Great multitudes followed him, Keith, and he healed them there. He didn't tell them to, let's, you not, now God's, you know, he's correcting you with this. And, and he actually let this come on you in, in order for you to learn something. Now, now you're going to have to, you're going to have to straighten up here for another couple of weeks. Then you come back and see me. You will not find that in the New Testament. You will not find that among the apostles. You will not find it in the Bible because it isn't there. Well, he, he put diseases on them over there in the 28th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. Read the 27th chapter before you say that. The answer's in the 27th. Don't just start with the 28th chapter. This, these are a people that they're having to be reintroduced to his covenant a national covenant which included the blessing of Abraham and the curse of the law of sin. But he had them out outside on two mountains. And he had six of the tribes on one mountain and six of the tribes on the other mountain. And Moses was leading them and they would shout back and forth. And, and people still do this in some churches where, where the pastor or the priest reads and the, and the congregation responds. The pastor reads and the congregation responds. That's what was happening out there that day. This is the blessing. And this side would shout all of these, I need a lot of people. And they would shout over across the mountain, blessed. And then, and then they would holler back, and the curse. They didn't know anything about the blessing of Abraham. They'd been in captivity for years and years and years, and they would be reintroduced to this covenant, and they wanted them to understand, you do what I tell you to do, and the blessing is there, and you'll stay well, and you'll be well, and this is what will happen if you break those commandments and you just won't do it, then the devil's there, and he'll come on you and try to kill you. But Jesus fixed that. Jesus was made that curse for us that the blessing of Abraham, the blessing of Abraham Amen. might come on us through Christ Jesus. Well, let's turn over there and look at it. Galatians chapter 3. Don't lose your place there. Put your marker there in Matthew because we're coming back. Verse 
Let's go to the third chapter of Galatians. The eleventh verse, that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident for the just, the righteous, shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that does them shall live in them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, so that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the, the promise of the Spirit, or what the Spirit promised in His covenant through faith. Glory to God. Every sickness, 61st chapter, or 61st verse of the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy. Every sickness, and they're shouting this, and Moses is shouting this at them. Every sickness and disease not written in this book of the law. So there's no such thing as a disease. I don't care what science comes up with, that, and they call it some new name. It's still sickness and disease. Yes. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, is under that curse. Well, glory to God, we've been redeemed from every sickness, every disease, every kind of flu, every kind of cancer, every kind of blind eye, every kind of deaf ear, every kind hey, we've been redeemed. Our glory to God. We've been redeemed. Our bones have been redeemed. Our ears have been redeemed. Our lungs have been redeemed. Our backs have been redeemed. Our, our, everything. Our, hey, you're redeemed. You understand that? <laughs> Spirit, soul, and body. Yes, sir. Yeehaw! Glory <laughs> to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are redeemed from the curse of that law. COVID-19 is a curse of the law, and COVID-19 is a name, and it has to bow its knee to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It has to bow its knee. Hallelujah. That's what the... Ah, hey, read the book of Philippians sometime. He's been given a name. No, he's been given the name. That King James Bible is a, a tad off right there. It says he's been given a name. No, no. Jesus has been given the name of God. Now, Hang in here with me. Of course, it is the name of Jesus. That name is above every name that's named. But now, whoa. The name of God. He's been given His name. His name. What is his name? Yehovah Rapha, the God that healed you. Yes. That name. And COVID 19 cancer has to bow its knee to your heart. Your Yehovah Rapha, the God that heals you. And for healing to have passed away, his name would have had to have changed. And like Gloria said, I quote her a lot. She's smarter than I am. I, and, and I quote her a lot. And she said, well, <laughs> I can just see her saying, well, God I suppose got up one morning and said, well, this is it. This is it. I've healed these people for centuries. I'm tired of it. <laughs> this is it. No more healing after midnight tonight, so get the word out. If you're going to get healed, you're going to have to get it before 12 tonight. <laughs> and you can adjust that for your time zone. <laughs> no. It's ludicrous. We started this service off that he's the same. Yesterday, today, yes. and forever. God loves Kenneth. 
You say it and you put your name in there. God heals Kenneth today. God heals Kenneth today. We were talking about this earlier, and I've been thinking about it earlier in the week. A young boy, now, you know, we talked about corresponding action last night. This young boy had something wrong with his feet. And his mother brought him to Oral Roberts' healing campaign. But they brought his shoes. Brought his shoes. And he didn't get, he didn't get to have hands laid on him. So Brother Roberts was leaving and he called to him, are you Oral Roberts? He said, yes, son, I am. And he said, I'm supposed to be healed today. Now, think about this. Oral Roberts laid his hands on over 2 million people, tore up his shoulders, and, and, but he, he just wouldn't quit. And, and he, would, he would leave the service. I've, I've heard him say, he said, I'm the tiredest man alive, that of us alive. And finally, it, he would be so tired that he just couldn't respond to the anointing and he'd just walk out of the service. And he was in that condition and he explained that, but he said, well, I don't know anything about that, but I'm supposed to be healed today. And so, and he said, well, you know, something about having faith for it. And his, and his, his mother said, you pray, I'll do the believing. I have faith. And so he laid hands on this young boy. Jesus healed him. He put on his new shoes and left. That young boy grew up to be a very powerful man of faith because he was supposed to be healed that day. Well, you're supposed to prosper today. Yes. You're supposed to be in health today. You're supposed to be healed today. You're supposed to have a life worth living today. And you're supposed to live long on the earth. <laughs> Length of days added well, Brother Copeland, I just believe you have a set time to die. Well, you're just wrong. Well, doesn't the book of Hebrews say that? No. Huh? It does not say that. It's been quoted like that. Given unto every man a time to die. That's one reason, Brother Copeland, I don't like to fly in airplanes. Why, sweetheart? You're not afraid of flying. You're afraid of dying. Admit it. <laughs> you're afraid of death. Well, what if it's the pilot's time? Don't you think God's smarter than that? No, it says there's appointed unto every man once to die. You have something to do with the time the way you conduct your life, the what you say and believe in your heart, and how you, the, the whole thing, spirit, soul, and body, the way you feed your spirit, the way you feed your mind, the way you feed your body. I mean, you're responsible. God's provided the spirit food and the mind food and the physical food, but He won't feed you. That's your choice. That's your decision. Besuchen Sie kcm-de.org oder wählen Sie 07621 422 2861, um mehr über Kenneth Copeland Ministries zu erfahren, um Gebet zu bitten und auch glaubensstärkendes Material zu finden. Kontaktieren Sie Freunde und Partner auf Facebook bei Kenneth Copeland Ministries auf Deutsch. Vergessen Sie bis zum nächsten Mal nicht, Gott liebt Sie und Jesus ist Herr.